What's up guys, Rudy here, and welcome to Let's Play Children of a Dead Earth. So we're going to continue with the campaign. We're going to do the Predatory Opportunism mission, where we need to destroy a dangerous enemy ship that is in an out-of-plane orbit around Mercury. Looks like Mercury has no lights on the night side. We at High Command think you are ready for your first dangerous encounter just in time, too. We've seen a spike in aggressiveness of the USD activity, especially around the belt. In particular, they had a warship patrolling the belt when they received word of us destroying their rogue spacecraft. Shortly thereafter, they diverted that spacecraft to Mercury. Jointly controlled by us and another faction, Mercury is rather important for our tactical operations. And so... Mercury is jointly controlled by our faction and the Iroquois Resurgence, who are not friendly with the USTA, and as a result the USTA cannot refuel their ship around Mercury, and they are basically a sitting duck for us, so we're going to convert them to scrap metal. Okay, so in the recommended reading here we have some information about orbital inclination. It says here that the most efficient way to switch between them is to burn at one of two points where your current orbit intersects the plane of the target orbit. The easiest way to find these points where the two planes intersect is to look at one of the orbits side on so that they both appear to be intersecting flat lines. The intersecting lines will intersect at two points, so we can actually visualize this once we get into the game. And here's some information about the Cataclysm. Nuclear weapons weren't used, at least not for a time, but the ice caps were coated in a thin layer of ash, reducing the albedo of the ice caps. Wow. Okay, we don't need the help, I don't think. Alright, so let's see, we need to try and line up our orbital planes, look look at them head-on. So I'm looking at my orbital plane head-on, but the enemy is completely out of plane with me. It looks like they're almost at 90 degrees out of plane. Well, not quite. So, if I do this, I'm looking at both orbits head-on, and that is the point that I, I want to aim for. So I think what I need to do is, uh, well, I'll select my escort carrier and select that orbital node. They actually uh, mark the point in the orbit where the intersection happens, right there. So I think what I'll want to do is uh, actually burn prograde to expand my orbit. And so once, uh, once the orbits get close enough, they, the game provides me with this icon I can click on that allows me to match orbit with the Corvette. Which I think I'll want to do. That'll just make things much simpler. And it creates this whole series of burns for me. So this is our escort carrier. Quite sizable. It has a, looks like it has a crew of 50, much larger than our previous ship. We have 25 Stinger drones, some decoy launchers, railguns, which I always like, and 4.86 kilometers of Delta V. So let's get this going. I'll do uh, one hour turns. And we're burning. We've expanded our orbit greatly. Then we're going to... Let's see. We're going to... Like now, if we look at this perspective, it's like we're coming down onto the enemy orbit. And we've come in right behind them. So now that we've matched orbit with the enemy ship, we can begin, we can launch our drones. As the drones don't have as nearly as much Delta V. So the escort carrier can use its Delta V to get the drones into position. And now we, I guess I'll start off with 20 drones. Hopefully that's all we'll need, just one attack of 20 drones. So, I mean, we're behind the enemy and we're, ne we're never going to catch up to them. We need to either decrease our orbit, I think we can do this here, burn retrograde a bit, and that way we'll be moving slightly faster than the enemy. And then we'll catch up to them. 
Because, I mean, by burning retrograde, we decrease the size of our orbit, and then of course we'll be moving faster. And then here we can do a flyby of the enemy. I think we'll want to do an interceptor though. And that's going to be 5 hours and 51 minutes from now. And that'll cost us 1.66 kilometers of Delta V, so let's get this going. You can see our, our drones are catching up to the enemy ship. And we're about to make... We just did our burn to intercept. Now we are on an interception course with the enemy. We can see the sun off in the distance. And there's Mercury. Beautiful. Beautiful day in the solar system. In the vicinity of Mercury. So we see we have our, our Stinger drone fleet down here on the rangefinder. Up beyond 20 kilometers is the enemy Corvette. And this is the range of our 30 millimeter cannons of... They have 16.4 kilometers, and the Corvette is 24.4 kilometers away. And the Corvette is approaching us at 1.59 kilometers per second. So it seems... I guess they'll be in range for about... Seems like they'll probably be in range of our cannons for about 5 seconds, but that's plenty of time to uh, cripple them. Excuse me. So we'll select the enemy corvette, and I think I'll target the coil guns at the rear of the ship, and that'll hopefully also cause us to hit their radiators and other essential equipment. And the enemy ship is currently orienting broadside to bring their guns to bear. All right, let's uh, let's make this look beautiful. How about let's get this going? And here come our drones, that whole cloud of green. And here comes their fire. Incoming transmission. Knock them out. This undeclared war is starting on a very good note indeed, Admiral. Now let's get back to port before enemy reinforcements arrive. Yes, this undeclared war. It may be undeclared, but if you get killed in this war, you're dead all the same. A new record, 12 hours and 2 minutes. Great. Gold rating. I've exceeded expectations, medals and promotions all round. Our next mission is to rendezvous a research craft with a space station on a low Delta V budget around Pallas? Pais? We have 15 days to complete the mission. Alright, so some information about frames of reference and orbital mechanics that we're already familiar with, I think telling us that the asteroid belt is actually quite sparse, not like what you see in the movies. And the faction is the Nippon Prime faction. Oh yeah, they're refusing to uh, refuel our system, our, our ships, because we suspect that the USTA is probably threatening the Nippon Prime. And we're dealing with this asteroid thing in the... In the uh... Right, so we have our research craft and our cargo station. So yeah, we need to meet up with the cargo station. I can't imagine this being very difficult. Oh, I see. So I mean, we're in the same plane. Okay, our research craft. How do we want to do this? I think... Incoming transmission. I think we want to do a burn here at our apoapsis. We can shrink our orbit. That's only going to cost us 4.7 delta V. I believe we want to do it at the apoapsis because it'll be the cheapest to do it there. Uh, but I can actually try. So that's 4.67. I can try the same maneuver here at the periapsis and see how much that'll cost us. Yeah, the same maneuver. That's going to cost us 26.5 meters of delta V. So yeah, we definitely want to do it at the periapsis. It's much more cost effective. Beautiful. And then we can select this icon here to match with the cargo station. And that's going to cost us 33 delta V, leaving us with plenty of delta V, I think, to actually make the, the rendezvous. Wow. 
we are in such a great orbit. I mean, yeah, it's kind of hard to know how far away we are. The uh, it's kind of hard to know the uh, the distance and scale of things in space like this. So we are about to approach the apoapsis, and we're going to do our our retrograde burn. Let's see if we can get a look at Palace from here. I'm not sure where it is. Maybe we're too far away to see it. But it's, uh... It's gravity reaches out. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that thing is far away. All right, well, we have to, we'll have to go back into the orbital view. So we just did our burn. Now we're on our way to Palace. I wonder, maybe we can do a... Maybe we can try something else here. Maybe we can shrink our orbit even more. Yeah, look at that. I can... Here I can burn even more retrograde. And this will give us the opportunity to meet up with the cargo station here. So we'll join with the cargo station. And that's going to cost us 56.1 Delta V, but that'll get us there. Incoming and we did it. I got a bronze rating because it took me five days to do it. But the record is one day and one hour. And that was Let's Play Children of a Dead Earth. Thank you for watching. Hit that thumbs up button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you for the next episode.